an eargasm of learning, and a no-fuss show. Welcome to the Creative Talk Podcast, where you can learn straightforward topics about branding, digital entrepreneurship, online business, and many more with your charming host, John Santos, along with inspiring entrepreneurs, creators, and thought leaders worldwide. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Creative Talk Podcast with me, John Santos. And this is the LinkedIn Live Sessions. Four times TEDx and keynote speaker, guys. You know, talk about legend. (laughs) (laughs) An author. That makes me really old. (laughs) Uh, She's an author. Um, I I love the way she creates uh, the material, it's very visual. Our guest for today, founder of Up Your Creative Genius. Let's all welcome my dear friend, Patty Drobrowalski. Welcome to the show. Oh, Jan, that is such a sweet introduction. I just want to say how thrilled I am to be here speaking with you again. I just love it. Every time we get together, it's combustible. Things happen. So I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Let's talk about how to let go of your past so you can future cast better, further, and faster. The floor is yours, my friend. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Well, you know, as you know, and many of the listeners will know, I'm a live illustrator and I show people how to use a simple drawing to accelerate making change in your life, meaning that you look at where you are, right now you get a piece of paper, You turn it horizontal on the left side, you put where you are right now. And then on the right side, you put where you want to be a year, three years, 10 years from today. And then in the middle, you come up with three bold steps to get yourself there. And, you know, I've done this for many, many years. I have, there's a lot of research about it. When you have that picture, 42% better retention, ability to achieve your goals. But recently, I have been just studying the neuroscience around how your brain works. And when you actually future cast without intention, you actually future cast and bring your past with you if you haven't cleared the space, Jan. So that is what I want to talk about today. How do you clear the space of your past so you can step better into your future? What do you think? Wow, I'm super excited. Uh, because, you know, this is something that is special to me. It, it, th- I believe this can really revolutionize not only, you know, entrepreneurs, but, you know, people. People that want to level up, you know, their game, their journey in life. This is really something that can change people's lives and bring them closer to their goals and to for them to achieve success. So, Patty, let's do this. The floor is yours. Okay, cool. So... One of the things that happens with your brain is that your brain is a prediction mechanism. It likes to keep things simple for you. So it often will try to solve things in advance using the past. So if you've done this before, then it will predict what the solution to this thing is. So what that means is like, let's say that you want to change a particular behavior or something that's happening you want to lose weight or you want to get fit, something like this. Now your brain knows, okay, now what's going to happen is that we're going to go on a diet and then after about a month, we're going to forget about the diet because we're approaching accelerate you getting to the place where you forget about the dieting completely because you expend less energy when you do that. And so how do we reroute that, right? I mean, this is, wouldn't you say, Jan, that, you know, uh, nine out of 10 people who want to set a goal for themselves don't achieve it. Yeah. That's why New Year's resolutions are so ridiculous, yeah, right? I, I was about to say that. I was about to say that. You know, uh, there's a majority. I've, I've read a blog about that, that I think it, it was it was drastic. I'm not sure if, you know, they collect enough data, but the, the, the post said on that blog was like 90% of people that set a goal or like you know a milestone a plan for new year's resolution doesn't happen they give up halfway that's right 
And so, you know, what we're talking about is the ability to change and grow. Now, when you're young, right, when you're just a baby, you are, you don't really know how to speak or any of that. So you get wired to do that by the interaction you have with the universe. And so the way your brain works is it gets tuned or it gets pruned. And you can imagine as you get older, you prune more and more and you tune into what you've done before. So the goal is really for you to change and grow, to learn something new and learn a language, do something that is hard for your brain to do. That, of course, gives you the ability to wire. You're rewiring because we're talking about a plastic mechanism with sign inside your brain. It's all, it's going to wire forever. It doesn't come to completion. So that's one thing about the future casting. If you want to be prepared for a future that you want to have, you've got to make yourself resilient and Ooh. able to know that anything is possible, right? Ooh, so I love that. First step. I love that. Yeah. I love yeah. that. And that's only the first so step. Got, <laughs> that's only that's that's really even the first step. And so, you know, the first step is that you want to learn things all the time as much as you can. The second thing is you want to keep your brain healthy. So you want to stay exercising. Exercise is like, you know, as Dr. Wendy Suzuki would say, that's like a bubble bath for your brain. Anytime you exercise, any sweat, that helps you. So now we're talking about the resilience of your brain. And then let's talk about your past, okay? Because you are all fired up and you're ready for that future. So you future cast out into the future of the things that you would love to have. And in my world, we draw them into a picture, you know, mm. with words yeah. and pictures. Well, even if you can't draw, because bad drawings are even better because it wakes your brain up and goes, ooh, you're drawing it. Oh, right, that right. picture is so ugly. But what's going to happen is those limiting beliefs from your past, they're going to interfere with you. So it's, sometimes it's people, it's things, it's experiences. They will follow you right into that. And that means that you are not coherent with future you. Hal Hirschfeld did all this research at UCLA about how each part of you, you know, the person that you are right now is going to be different than the person that you are even next year, 10 years from now. If you think about who you were when you were in high school, right, or grade school, you're a completely different person. Mm. So to future cast, you got to let go of the expectation that you're going to be that person. You're not going to be that person. You will be someone else. Wow. But that person in the future, those dreams you have of that money, that house, those things, your business, the connections, the relationships, the partnerships, you have to come into coherence with that energy field of that. And so that's what quantum energy is all about. Mm. You have to let go of the energy of your past self and expand the energy of your future and your present self to step into that future. Ooh. <laughs> and so if you think about it, like, all right, so right now the Olympics are on. Right. So this is interesting, right? Because they say that your energy field, you're made up of energy, and you're either energy or you're matter, and that the more your heart is open, the wider your energy field is. So the more grateful you are. You know, you always say when you talk to me, I feel so blessed, yeah, right? Yeah. Well, that blessing opens your heart. And if you can even go beyond that to where you just love that you're alive mm. and you're grateful for that, you expand your energy field so far that you become more energy than matter. Ooh. And when you respond to people, like, you know, somebody says something, then you're mad. You're on the freeway, they make you mad. Whatever it is, you're more matter than you are energy. And when you're in matter, you're competitive, and that you have to try to win from a place of power 
versus energy because you're not coherent. You're looking at one event, one experience, one person, one interaction instead of this bigger picture of you. Wow. Wow. And, and that's just, <laughs> this is what I love about having a conversation with you, Patty. It, it, it's, you know, the, the, the topic is so, it's massive and it's so powerful, but you, you deliver it like straight to the point, easy to understand. And I don't know about, you know, our listeners, but I'm, I'm having like, you know, uh, a vis visual display in my mind now. And I, it's because of the power of Patty guys. He, she's, she's just, you know, a character. <laughs> I love how she explains things. It, it's, it's very easy to understand and it you the way she delivers it it gives you the importance of why this is important and how can this transform two points you know we think it, we're so tactical in the world and we're so distracted all the time by our phones and facebook and mm. you know tiktok all of that and when we are in this distracted state, what happens in your brain is it is incoherent. It's not incoherent. It's, it's distracted. Mm. And so your job, and this is why we meditate. This is why we pray. This is why we get quiet. To bring ourselves into a state of coherence and to open our hearts. Because from a place of open-heartedness, anything is possible. And you step into the potential of who you are. And, you know, everybody's always saying, you should step into your potential. If you can only be your potential. Well, what is your potential? Mm. Well, your potential, what do you think your potential is, Jan? I don't know. I mean, this is a question. You're right. You There's a lot of gurus out there. There's a lot of creators out there, coach. You know, I'm, I'm not um, saying that they're fake, and and they're they're teaching this: step onto the new you, step onto your next level, step onto your full potential, or achieve your full potential. And the first time I encountered that question, what is your full potential? How, how do you answer that, Patty? Well, I I think really our it comes down to this: be our potential, everybody's potential is to be and bring more love into the world. Ooh. That's the highest potential. That's the point. Everything else is secondary, like all the stuff and all of that. That stuff matters and makes your life better. But if you come to the end of your life, you're not going to care about all that stuff. You're going to care about did you have good relationships with people? Or did you care about them? Did they care about you? Did you make an impact by helping to, to be more love and spread more love? These are the things that matter. And so if you can realize that that is actually the way to cast your net into the future better is by riding this love wave, ride the love wave into the future, not in a not in a airy fairy way. What I mean is <laughs> truly, you know, like what does love feel like when you close your eyes and you open your heart, right? Yeah. How do you actually do that with your eyes closed? And what is the sensation of being heart centered? Wow. Because when you're in coherence there in your heart, then you're in your potential then anything that you want, you're a magnet for because you send out this intention of the things that you want and your energy field is the magnet that pulls it back to you. I love that. So I so love that. Intention is the future cast, right? I'm yeah. throwing out my line. This is the future I want. And if you were, uh, if we were live, you'd see that on my, you know, on my wall behind me, I have my future map here, right? And it talks about all the things, new kinds of creative work and unusual vacations and freedom and podcasts and a fantastic mm. platform and all of these things. Like 
new ideas. These things matter to me so I can help people make change better, right? That's what's on my map. That's what I future cast. But my bold steps are simple. Operate with love. And what does that mean? That means have brain and heart coherence. Wow. Don't be distracted. Just be in coherence with love. Wow. And then my second one is explore new ways to do things because I could do things from my past self. I've been very successful. I could just continue to build on whatever that past self did. But I want to break into a new future self. And how do you do that? Well, I'm going to get into this place of nothingness where I'm not attached to what happens, that I actually in meditation go into a place where I experience the expansive universe. And then I'm going to be present to that and not scared of it. Wow. Because I don't, I don't know about you, but when you meditate, you know, sometimes you feel like, oh, I'm going to lose myself in this meditation, right? Yeah. But that's the place of power. Wow. Is to go through the fear of that and get in there. And then the third bold step is to show up every day. Boom. That's what I'm going to do. Boom. That, that's, a, that's a mic up there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, the thing I love about you, Patty, and, um, you know, I, I've, I've met a, a lot of people, a lot of experts, speakers, leaders um, in this industry uh, internationally when I started this journey. And... I only have, you know, a very few people that I really love and admire. Um, why? It's because of this. The, the things that you share, uh, it, it, it's beyond, uh, it's not common. And it's only you and Pete Cohen who, who share the same vibe. You know, I, I remember having a conversation with him. I was in a yacht uh, having a, a, a Skype call, no, a Zoom call um, with him. And I said, what's the he, essence? He said, I was on a yacht. You did hear that, people listening. I love that. Yeah. The, the yacht is not <laughs> mine, though. future cast. Yeah. The yacht future is not cast. mine, though. <laughs> <laughs> I was invited. But, you know, telling the truth, I, I was on the yacht, but I didn't say that yacht is yeah. mine. <laughs> <laughs> so I was there. Exactly. <laughs> I was there. I, I love to have one. So, <laughs> um, so and and I asked him out of nowhere. You know, uh, we were planning about an event. Um, and then I said, uh, Pete, what, you know, for you, what is success? And you know, he he answered. But the 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 main point is, you can be successful when you are a part of someone someone's journey and you're helping them you're changing people's lives you know things like that and you operate in kindness humility and love and now with us in the show patty shared the same thing you know when you operate in love when when you think about how making an impact and you know not just being famous impact that means you've touched people's lives it doesn't need to be many you know it just need to to be uh, a change in someone for the better how did you live your life and and for me it's like a reminder that i love what you said patty that everything comes next first should be to operate in love and that's why i admire you and i respect you and i love you so much you and pete oh thank you jan well i would say that about you the way that you work with people and treat them you know, at all of the way that you held my business, and, you know, helped me to expand my brand in the social space was really incredible. And um, one of the things that I thought might be helpful to listeners is these ways that you can get that brain heart coherence. Mm. There are actual things you could do. There's five key things. You want them? Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Uh, yep. Okay, so the first one, is to do some kind of calming activity in your day, right? Start your day by meditating or doing yoga or walking or being in nature, something that will keep your, and calm down your nervous system, calm down that brain. 
And then the second thing is to do some heart centered breathing, like breathe into your heart, breathe long and deeply and allow your heart to expand in the breath. Big breath, feel it in your heart. And then the third thing, and this is something that I think you have down completely, which is around appreciation. So you wake up and you are grateful in advance for what will happen in that day. And then at the end of your day, you're grateful for what did happen. And you look forward to an anticipation of the next day. Wow. And the fourth is to be non-judgmental. Ooh. And this is the tricky one, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, because you that's can very hard. <laughs> easily, you can get into this critical space, but... If you can be non-judgmental for an hour, just practice for an hour and then try to do it in a whole day where you watch what your how your mind will be critical or, you know, say things about other people and expand your ability to be non-judgmental and just be present to what's happening. And then the last one is to forgive, to understand that, you know, people have harmed you and you will have harmed other people, not necessarily on purpose or sometimes on purpose, but you want to come to embrace forgiveness. So these five things, some kind of calming activity. Wow. That join us in the show right now. This, I want to, I want to meet you, this person, Patty. Uh, this is someone that I really also respect and love. He's a, a two-time LinkedIn top voice. Uh, I don't know if he can join us, but he's uh, he's here already. He's Martin Stark. Martin, partner, welcome to the show. Um, I want you to meet the amazing Patty Drobrowolski. If you're ready, I know it's very early or late, I don't know, in your side of the world, please join us. We're talking about how to let go of your past. So you, oh, there you go. Yeah, hey, he's ready. Ah, oh, Patty. Hey, prepare, right. prepare oh. for the conversation. This is gonna be awesome. Um, I wait, love wait, it. wait. You know the technical things here in LinkedIn is just amazing. There you go, partner. Whoop whoop. Oh, fantastic. Hi, Martin. Good morning. How are you? Really good. How are you, Courage Champion? Not too bad. I'm actually giving myself a break from social media. A good friend of mine gave me some advice that in order to be creative, she need wellness. So I've just had a very bad bout of depression. So I decided, ah. I decided the best thing was to come off social media. And it's amazing how you can just connect with people, friends and family. And sometimes step, stepping away from the hyper-connected world that we're in is sometimes what you need. Yeah. Bring yourself back into coherence with your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Love yeah, that. That's Love fantastic. that. Fantastic. Oh, Patty, um, can, can you give uh, uh, Martin an overview of the, the two points that you shared earlier? Uh, you know, because I know he can, he can add something um, about that, you know, operating in love and, you know, the, you need to relax the brain and things like that. Just an overview. So yes, that we yes, can have a course. conversation I, about that. Of course. So I had talked earlier, Martin, about the importance of, you know, future cast out of the past if you don't calm yourself down because you're distracted by social media, by all of those things, right? And so the way you shift yourself from that is through creating a heart coherence and to do that, you know, that has to do with meditation and breathing and appreciation and non-judgment and forgiveness. And I wonder, um, you know, you said that you had experienced depression. Did you um, find that it was because of what you saw online um, and the reflection that people were giving you? Or did you just, is it something that you felt like you were out of alignment with yourself? So I've had clinical depression probably every 10 years or so. Uh, and I noticed my mood just wasn't the same. So just more of, of a safety mechanism, I decided I was going to come off social media. So mm -hmm. a lot of the work done with fighting homophobia, I've been the target of online bullying, which doesn't usually bother me when I don't have depression. But I decided, let's just go into 
focusing on myself and just coming off. And often people get so pent up what they see online, but what happens online doesn't always reflect real life. Life. Yeah, it's so true. And I, I actually think that online is can be a very toxic space, especially if you're gay. I'm gay too, so you know those. I and I've lived a long time, so I was you know of the era where they, um, you know, you couldn't come out in yeah. public for many many years. So you know, that kind of internalized homophobia really changes your perception. And it's part of, for me, it was part of the past that I had to let go of. I had to really learn to love myself for who I was so I could love other people and they could love me. Did you find that to be true for you too? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I grew up in the 1980s in the era of Margaret Thatcher, Section 28, demonization of the community, particularly gay and by men. Yeah. And it was an environment of abject fear. There was a sick on that sitcom, a soap opera called EastEnders, which is still ongoing. It was the most popular show and they had two gay characters and there was a peck on the cheek and it was national outrage. Oh yeah. So it's that environment that people don't understand for years. You fear accepting who you are because of rejection. And then maybe some different things happen. And I think, I hope we're not heading back in that direction, but, you know, we might be. Yeah. Well, I think um, no matter which direction we're headed to, we can stay in in a place of love, right? And know that if we have the opportunity to spread love in every moment, you know, I mean, I've been in rooms where people have not supported my preference and all i have to say is whatever you know if you can learn to open yourself to love you'll see that love is love i have a question for, for, for that patty uh, sorry to butt in um how, how do you operate in love in 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 such an environment where you know hate um judgment is present uh, this is coming from you know uh, a different perspective for me because uh, I, I respect you both and and I see the the authenticity in in the stories that you share. But how do you operate in love in in an environment where you feel you are not being welcome and the hate and the the judgment is present? Well, you know, for me, and I know, Martin, you'll have your own answer to this, but for me, I think, you know, I see love as and fear as two sides of the same coin. So if somebody is in a place of, you know, not um, being open to anybody, what, the color of your skin or whatever, your preference and who you sleep with or who you choose to love, they're living in a place, they're coming at it from a place of fear. And I assume that everybody has a consciousness of some kind. And my job really, because I know who I am and I trust who I am, is to bridge to their state of consciousness and see if I can help them take one tiny step up. And that is sometimes just listening for me. I've found that, you know, if I can listen to them, then they think, huh, that she's a lesbian. And she listened to me and I just spewed all that whatever. And I, I just listen with love. And I also put up my magic shield. So none of that comes into me that it just reflects back to them. The way I look at it is sometimes people will say to you, you come out, you're still the same Martin, Jan or Patty. I turn that around when you tell somebody who you are. Is the person you told the same person you've known for 25 years, 21 years, do they change because you've just told them another, another thing about you? Because you might spend 20 years being somebody's friend and they tell you and they go, sorry, I can't deal with you anymore. And I think that's the difference. We, we want society to accept us for who we are and then we adapt to what society expects of us. And live their life of fear. A life of courage is, is owning that fear to the extent of you may need to walk away from people. Yeah. But at the same time, you might have to open up to others who can be the friendships that you probably should have had 20 years ago, but are now saying 
you didn't play with us, but we always knew who you are. You, you were always welcomed. So sometimes you need to find a different group. Wow. Yeah, I would agree. And I also think, too, you know, that there, if you can recognize that it's not about you, their experience is their own and they're entitled to it. Just like, you know, there are some people who try to convert you to their religion. Yeah. And what I say to them is, you know, there are so many religions in the world for every state of consciousness. Yeah. And so to tell somebody that they should fit into your state of consciousness is really impinging on their freedom. And that's how I see about not not accepting other people. You're in, you're infringing on their freedom to be whoever they are. And if you can accept them, and also, for me, don't think I don't have judgment about other people, too. I got to do the work to be able to work through my judgment so that when somebody's judging me, I understand what it is that they're doing and so I can come at that with a different understanding of empathy, you know, and to help them take the next step. It's my job, really. I mean, I guess, but I'm older, you know, so I'm in my late 60s. You're so not old, Betty. It's true for me. Yeah. No, but I'm <laughs> older. And so, you know, I, sp I spent many a room, Martin, you know, working with all white men. And I yeah. would... You know, indefinitely, I would always tell them that I had a wife or a girlfriend or whatever it was. That was like within the opening so that they knew. And then from there, once they realized who I was and how far they got in the session with me or whatever, it really helped to sh to for me to just come out and be like, this is who I am. So I'm not going to pretend to be somebody else. And it gave people in the room courage to be who they were, too. And I think that's part of your platform, too. You're about being courageous to be yourself. It's it's interesting. The rise of the Andrew Tate of the world, I think because there's been a devoid of, of healthy masculinity and too much focus on talking about toxic masculinity and, and some men, you know, feel scared to actually say something. Um, I believe in inviting people to sit alongside you, have conversations. Mm. Yeah. Um, help people become allies because most people i've met in life are allies i've met far more people far more jans in the world than yeah. not Aww. being a jan agreed agreed me as well i me too i think that there are so many and allies are essential allies there is a central glue to making change in the world that's how it happens Wow, you guys are you guys are amazing i'm, I'm loving the conversation here and i'm a bit I'm not crying because I'm sad. I'm crying because I'm happy. Um, again, I, I said this to Patty a while ago. I'm I'm so blessed to be to be given an opportunity to be a part of your life, guys. Um, Patty, Martin. Um, it was it, you know it's a blessing if Pete can join us, but to be a part of your journey, to learn from your stories, your it's it's just life changing, and I'm just one person. I know people that will be listening to this episode. We can you know pave the way for them to be to be free, a life focused on love and helping others to achieve their success. So again, guys, thank you so much, Patty. I love you so much, Martin. I know you're not feeling well, but you're always here to support, and you know I love you as well. So thank you, the yeah, both of you. Nah, no, thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jen. Thanks for having the conversation today, Martin. Great to meet you. You too. Take care. All right, guys. So that's the special episode for today for everyone listening on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Thank you so much. Remember, have a positive outlook in life. Smile. God bless. Please do connect with Patty Drawerwalski here on LinkedIn. I know she can help you in your journey towards success. And as always, please do support the content that Martin Stark here posts on LinkedIn. I'm sure he can help you and guide you in your LinkedIn adventure. Again, guys, love you all. Patty, Martin, thank you. God bless you. Bye. Thank you for being with us here on the Creative Talk Podcast. I'm your host, John Santos. Don't forget to listen and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. See you again, always.